Hello friends, Pastor Bill Johnson here from the First United Methodist Church in Orange. Welcome to another episode of We Are The Church. Happy Monday morning to you, wherever you may be. It's good to be with you today. Thank you for these few minutes of uh, mutual encouragement that we have to spend each day. Uh, it's already the last week of April, which I'm finding to be incredible. By the end of this week, by Saturday, we will have uh, booked the first third of uh, the year 2021. It will already be over. And that is uh, hard for me to get my head around. The days are flying by right now. I know a lot of people are becoming more active, but I want to continue to encourage you to be uh, careful about uh, the pandemic, which is, you know, COVID-19 is still out there, so do be careful. This week, our emphasis in uh, these daily videos is going to be on one of the means of grace that is most accessible to all of us, and that is prayer. And so uh, we'll be reading to start off the week with Matthew chapter 6, verses um, five and following. Jesus said, whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you're praying, do not heap up empty phrases such as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Prayer is one of the most important of these means of grace. It's a source of communion with God. It's a source of uh, receiving from God. It's also a source of being uh, uh, able to be honest with God. In fact, Martha Rowlett, a retired member of our annual camp, a conference, had written a marvelous book. And in there, she says, how can we think about prayer? And she said, really, it, it, it falls in two ways. Prayer is an openness to God. That is an openness or an awareness of God's presence in our lives. But it's also openness with God being fully honest about ourselves and and coming to God with a clean slate. So many questions come up when people uh, start a prayer life. How do I hold my hands? Do I fold them? Do I lift them up? Do I raise my arms over my head? Do I kneel? Do I sit? Do I lay prostrate face down on the floor? How should I come before the Lord? Uh, it's Jesus is using the image here of going into your room. It's a very... Um, it's a very narrowly defined word that he uses there, and really the closest translation we could come to is like a bridal chamber. It's a it's a place where Jesus is inviting us to a place of intimacy with God. And that intimacy of, with God does, as Dr. Martha Rowlett suggests, imply an openness to whatever it is that God brings to the table, but also an openness with God about what we bring to the meeting. The point in all of this, friends, is that we are in a relationship with uh, a real being, with a real entity, that God is real and God is active in the world, and we'll explore some of the ways that uh, works itself out in our prayer life. But the point is that we just need to get started in prayer. There is no way to fail at this, except if we find ourselves in those circumstances where everyone else in the world but God is uh, is the center of our focus. When we're concerned about what others may think of us, when we're concerned about what others may say about us, if we're concerned about shaping the words of our prayers in such a way that the humans that we interact with will be proud of us, then we have taken our focus off the real point. The real point is that prayer as a means of grace is meant to draw us closer to the presence of God. And so God needs to be our only concern as we come to prayer. Um, just to find a way to um, set the world aside, to come to a, an inner chamber in our heart, in our mind, literally a place apart from the world, 
so that we can have communion with God. And over time, this repeating of this um, act of prayer uh, on a constant basis uh, helps us to know more and more and more about God and um, the heart of God. Um, it becomes a launching pad to a, a wonderful relationship with God. You know, it strikes me when we watch a child learning to walk, you know, that they stand up, they wobble a little bit, they fall down, and they usually just smile and laugh and giggle, and they get up and they try it again. I don't know how it is that as we get older, we lose uh, the confidence of just setting out and beginning to do something that we're not necessarily really good at, but we're going to be. We're going to grow, and we're going to learn, and we're going to figure it out. Where do we lose that sense of adventure when it comes to prayer and things like that? We should just begin, is what I'm saying. God is waiting. God is longing for a relationship with each of us. So when you turn off this video, I'll go into that uh, inner room and just get quiet and start being with God. Remember to listen as well as speak. Remember to share with God who you are as well as receive from God who God is. But just get started. That's the word for today. Don't wait another day. Just begin to include prayer in your daily disciplines. Focused daily prayer, the practicing of the presence of God, is a powerful means of grace. And to get us started, why don't we pray right now? Lord, we do thank you and praise you for the opportunity to be with you, to know your presence, to feel your spirit close at hand, or sometimes simply have the confidence that even though we feel nothing at all, you are with us. And so, God, as we begin this week together, we pray that you will give us the gift of faith, that we may know your presence more completely, that we may know you and that our love for you will grow and grow under the guidance of your Holy Spirit. And we pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a kind of jump into the deep end kind of uh, encouragement, but just get started this week. And remember to make prayer a big part of your life uh, by taking the little steps that you can do on a day-to-day -day basis. And remember, as you go out today, to wash your hands, remember to read a song, and remember to tell somebody that you love them. I'll see you tomorrow.